Hey there, welcome back to Even Studio. Uh, my name is Elizabeth and I design and teach quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. And I do all different kinds of embroidery and hand stitching. So that's some of what I'm going to share with you today. So I recently finished up this project that I'm really excited about. And it's a little collection of small um, hardinger pieces. And so they can be hung as ornaments or they could also be used as um, like fobs on scissors or cutters or any other kind of embellishments. And so I have a whole set of them. Um, I'm really happy with how they turned out. Uh, these ones that I did, they're on blue linen stitched with ivory. And so I think that looks really nice together. And so this is a pattern that's going to be released a little later in the year. So look for that in the fall. Uh, there's uh, eight different uh, little pieces. So uh, be watching for those because I think they look really great. And then I've moved on from Hardinger, although I'm still working on Hardinger, but I've moved on to my next Christmas project. And this is going to be um, Bargello which this is a fun, um, easy, low stress project. And so you can see this is an ornament. It's almost completed. The stitching is complete and I'm just putting them back onto um, the ornament so it can be hung up. Um, this Bargello is a little bit different because I'm doing it on Ada cloth instead of on canvas. And so I tried that and I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. And it's just with embroidery floss. So it is um, easy to do and it's easy to get all the supplies that you need for that. So it's a little different than traditional Bargello, but I do like how this is turning out. And so I am excited about uh, this collection as well. So I have a lot of things planned for later on in the year. So you'll be getting some sneak peeks about those. But what I'm gonna be working on today is actually not embroidery, it's actually pojagi. And this is traditional hand stitch Korean patchwork. And normally, or traditionally, this would have been done to make pojagi, which are wrapping cloths. But I'm gonna be using some of this silk fabric and I'm making a hand stitch variation of one of my patterns which is the elegance uh, scarf pattern and this is a pattern that I have and the samples that I've done so far have been stitched on machine and they've been made with batik rayon and this is a great option because the rayon is so soft and drapey it feels nice for a wearable product but I'm also adapting that same pattern to do it with hand stitching. And so it's generally the same. There are a couple little things you need to watch out for if you're gonna be doing hand stitching, but I'm making a sample of this and this really lightweight silk fabric that I have. So you can see I've done about this much so far. So I have a ways to go to turn it into a scarf. And I've done some of these little sections but I just need to join all these sections together. Um, and so that's what I'm in the process today is just joining these uh, sections together. So you'll be able to see um, how that works, how I work with the silk fabric and the silk thread and how this uh, technique is different from regular patchwork. Because as you can see, it is finished on both sides. So it is, um, it's like a flat fell seam, except this one stitched by machine. I mean, this one is stitched by hand, not by machine. So the hand stitching version is going to be different than anything that you've seen before. So uh, come along and see how I'm stitching this seam. And of course, if you have any questions about this technique or how I'm doing it, then um, be sure to put a question in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer that. Um, so here we go. The fabric that I'm working with in this project is lightweight silk fabric 
And one of the things that people ask me a lot of times is how do I handle the silk fabric and how do I deal with the fraying that happens? So as you can see, there is quite a bit of fraying. And so I'm just gonna trim it off before I sew the seams. So this is something that you will have to do more regularly than you would if you were sewing with cotton, but it's not uh, too inconvenient to just give it a little trim before you join the pieces together. So these are the two edges that I'm gonna be joining. So I'm just laying them out together to see that they are the same length and see if there's anywhere that I need to adjust it. And this seam technique is very different, probably different than any seam that you've seen before. And this is one of the reversible patchwork options that come from traditional Korean Pujagi patchwork. So I'm threading my needle with just regular uh, polyester sewing thread in a contrasting color. And this is going to be used for basting. So these stitches are not going to stay in the finished project. They are going to be removed after the seam has been stitched. So a contrasting color will make it easy to uh, keep separate. It won't get caught up in the seam that I'm sewing and then it will be easy to remove. So I've aligned the two pieces of fabric, but the edges are offset and it's approximately a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less than a quarter of an inch that you can see the white fabric is stitching out past the edge of the pink fabric. And then I'm just basting these together with fairly long stitches, but stitches that will help hold them securely while the stitching is being done. And this is helpful because the silk can sometimes be a little bit slippery and this is a longer seam. So basting will just help make sure that it doesn't shift as I'm sewing. So once the basting's done, I'm gonna use a hair marker just to crease the fabric right on the stitching line. So this is marking where the exact stitching is going to be taking place. And I put an old piece of cardboard, um, like part of an old cereal box on the table, and this just helps protect the table as I'm creasing with the hair marker, because then uh, the, creases won't go into the wood on the table. So now that the fabric is creased, it will fold very easily on those crease marks. And so I'm folding both sides of the fabric back so it's away from each other and the seam allowances are together in the middle of the seam. So the fabric is actually wrong sides together but with the seam allowance in the middle. And so I'm folding it on the fold, the crease that I made with the hair marker. And then I'm just putting some pins in to help hold it in place. 
So between the basting and the pins, this seam is really going to be held securely for the stitching part of it. So even though it's silk and it's really lightweight and uh, slippery, it is not really moving anywhere. So now that it's pinned and it's all ready, I'm going to take this silk thread and this is pretty fine silk thread just to match the weight of the fabric that I'm working with. And I'm going to thread the needle and then tie a knot in the end of the needle. Now I'm bringing the thread up and I put the needle in on the inside of that little crease. So right in the seam allowance. And then I'm stitching with an overcast stitch or a whip stitch. So I put the needle through the fabric perpendicular to the edge of the fabric. So the needle is straight and that gives a little slant to the stitches. So the stitches look like they're slanted because I bring the needle through straight. The stitches are fairly small and they don't take too much of a bite out of the fabric. It's only going down about a thread or two from the crease that's in the fabric. So I'm trying to keep my stitches consistent in size and spacing and I'm going to work this across the whole edge of the seam. So this stitching is the same kind of stitching that is used in lined pojagi, pojagi that just has one stitching in the seam and then has a lining or a backing fabric. Uh, this is the same stitching as that, it's just that there's going to be more stitching to go on in the seam.
So when I get to the edge of the seam, just before I finish off the thread, I'm going to take the piece and open it up just to make sure that it can lay flat. So if the tension in the stitches is too tight, then it's going to leave a little uh, bump or a little hill in the uh, line of stitching uh, because it's pulled flat. And if it's too loose, then the pieces of fabric won't be together the way they're supposed to be. So I'm just opening it up to make sure that the tension is right. And if there's anything that needs to be adjusted, it can be done now. And then once it looks like everything is smooth and the tension is right, then I can just knot the thread and leave knot in the seam allowance. So now that the first side of the seam is finished, I'm going to finish the second side of the seam. And so to do that, I lay that flat just the way it was when I basted it. But so it has the longer seam allowance sticking out past the first seam allowance. And now I'm marking the crease with the hair marker just past the edge of the lower seam allowance. So the first fold I'm going to be doing is just folding the wider seam allowance over the narrower seam allowance. And this should fold pretty easily with the crease that's made with the hair marker. And then once the wider seam allowance is folded over the narrower seam allowance, then I'm going to open this up and lay it flat. So when it's laid flat, I'm just going to make sure that the seam allowance is pressed under. Then I'm going to take my ruler and hair marker and I'm going to mark that uh, main piece of fabric just at the edge of that folded over seam. So I'm pressing the hair marker with a back and forth motion so it leaves a clear crease on the fabric. And I can going to continue this all the way down to the end of the seam. So once that crease has been made, then I'm going to fold the fabric back from the seam again. So this is similar to how we folded it when we were doing the first half of the seam. So we're folding the fabric so that the seam allowance is on the inside. And then we're going to hold that with a pin.
Once the whole seam has been folded and pinned, then we'll take a long piece of silk thread again, we'll knot it and we'll bring up the knot inside the seam allowance. So it's in that little fold. And then we will stitch the other side with that same stitch that we used. So it's an overcast stitch or a whip stitch, but we're bringing the needle through the fabric perpendicularly so that the needle goes through straight and there's a little slant in the stitches.
Once we get to the end of the seam, then we'll knot off the thread and bury the knot inside that seam allowance. Then cut off the end of the thread. And there is our seam. So it's finished on both sides so that no raw edges are exposed. All these raw edges are inside that seam allowance. Then we can remove the basting threads because we don't need those anymore. And there we can see the finished seam.